Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for cutting my grandparents out of my kids' lives and not letting them back in? I'm not entirely sure where to start, but my ex-husband left me and our two children, then one and two years old, almost ten years ago. He just came home shortly after our anniversary and said that he hated me and hated our kids and needed us to leave as soon as possible. At the time I believed our marriage was happy and healthy. This literally came out of the blue, and I was caught completely unaware. We had no money issues, we were making long-term plans of buying a home and career plans, and we were still going on date nights and having sex very regularly, so I had no idea where this was coming from. I was devastated, and it took me years to get over this. I've never received an answer for the reason for his decision. I respected his choice and within a week, flew to his parents' home. At the time, my mother-in-law and I were very close. I spoke and texted her multiple times a day and always kept his parents up to date with pictures, appointments, and videos of their grandsons. When I first arrived, everything was normal, but that didn't last long. There was a weird tension within the household, and I felt like I wasn't wanted. As I was trying to figure out what to do with my marriage, if this was really over or if my husband was going through some sort of mental breakdown, trying to figure out how to be a single mother and working out income and work balance, I was also dealing with my own issues with the dramatic change in my life. Within a month of my arrival, my mother-in-law came to me and said that this living arrangement wasn't working and I needed to find another place to live, which I readily agreed to. They were much older, and having two toddlers and another adult within a small space was tight, to say the least, and of course, there was that weird tension. I explained to her I was actually already looking at some apartments close by and had a job interview lined up within that week, and as soon as I could, the kids and I would move out. Her response was, no, we mean you need to leave and leave the boys with us. I looked at her, shock on my face, and said that I would think about it. As soon as she left, I called a distant relative and relayed to her what happened. She advised me to leave as soon as I could and was concerned that my father-in-law and mother-in-law were trying to take the kids away from me. With this advice and feeling panicked, I decided to go ahead and leave then and there. I packed as much as I could and left to go to my own family members. My in-laws tried to stop me and take my children, in which I told them they couldn't kick me out and take my children. I asked them to move, and I placed my children in the car first before grabbing our things and leaving. I want to take a pause to add that my in-laws were the passive-aggressive controlling type. If things weren't done in the way that they would have done and how they believe something should be done, they would nag, guilt trip, and gaslight you until you folded into whatever they wanted. This was something that was always a point of contention within our relationship, because even though it worked for my then-husband, it never worked for me. They were also the type that never made a suggestion without making plans for it first. So when my family mentioned that they were more than likely in the process of taking the children from me legally, I didn't doubt it in the least. Up until this incident, my in-laws and I had what I believed was a very good relationship built on respect and love. I viewed this as a betrayal and worked on rebuilding my life closer to my family rather than my ex-husband's. After almost a year of no contact with my in-laws, I spoke to the same family member about making amends with my in-laws. I stressed that I didn't want my boys to grow up without their grandparents like I had, and even though she was tentative, she agreed I should do what was best. I made the first attempt, we talked it out and pushed it under the rug. We began again with daily communication of videos, texts, FaceTiming at night, and keeping them constantly in contact with their grandsons. When it was time for my ex-husband to take the kids for visitations, it was always his mother that I worked the arrangements with. There were a few incidents in this time period where there were some passive-aggressive remarks and suggestions that I bypassed. Secret plans that would be made regarding the children that they would intentionally not tell me about that I was able to navigate through. Despite this, we were back to saying, love you, at the end of our calls and sending memes and jokes to one another throughout the day. Then came the year that my ex wasn't able to take the kids due to finances. I spoke to my mother-in-law and suggested that instead of flying, we could drive and meet halfway, and I'd be more than happy to drop off the boys for their visit. This was planned in the spring of the year, and the visit wouldn't happen until the holidays. As the day started coming closer and closer, something didn't feel right within me. It just didn't feel right. 
I mentioned this to a friend, and she said I shouldn't feel odd because my ex was able to come. That stopped me in my tracks, and I asked her what she meant. I didn't know it, but she had kept tabs on my ex, where he posted that he was flying in again he couldn't afford it, and was excited to see everyone. I called my in-laws, who were already on their way, and straight up confronted my mother-in-law. She was instantly nervous and stuttering, and made the weak excuse that she thought my ex and I had corresponded about this. She absolutely knew that I hadn't spoken to her son and hen for over a year. I told her I didn't care that he was coming since it was his holiday, but I didn't appreciate the lack of respect for me that they were hiding this from me. She asked me if I was still meeting them, and I said I would. I drove the 14 hours one way and dropped off the kids, and it was very obvious I was not happy and very angry about the whole interaction. She called her son, my ex-husband, and he called me to try to smooth things over, which didn't do anything at all. I left, allowed them to have their visit, and picked the boys up ten days later. The entire time I tried to rationalize and reason why my in-laws constantly behaved the way they did, and I tried to keep my emotions in check, but couldn't figure it out. I was extremely hurt about this, and would often start crying about it. I picked up the boys and kept a low-contact profile with my in-laws, which, since we were constantly texting and calling all throughout the day, was very evident that something was wrong. My mother-in-law asked me what was going on, and I wrote her a long email letting her know that I was extremely hurt by their treatment of me and I was trying to figure out my emotions from that. Her response was to basically call me insane and immature, saying she had no idea what I was talking about. My response to that was to inform her that I had no intentions of keeping contact with her or my father-in-law, and that I wouldn't have the children around people who would so blatantly disrespect their mother. A few years later, my ex-husband called me, he rarely calls, requesting that I start reaching out to his mother and allow her to get back into the kids' lives. I explained to him that my decision was firm and I had no intention of doing so. Even though this interaction was years ago, I can't help but wonder if that was the right decision. Ultimately, I want what's best for my kids. I want them to grow up feeling loved, supported, and secure in all of their relationships. If that means reopening the door to their grandparents, then I'm willing to consider it. But I also know that I can't make this decision lightly. I've spent years building a stable, happy life for my children, and I won't jeopardize that without careful thought and consideration. AITA for keeping my kids away from their grandparents. Or am I just a mother doing what I believe is necessary to protect my children from potential harm?